Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today it's going to be a very simple one. We're going to be looking at the subject of clones. And a lot of you have asked about clones and why would you use them and how do they work. So let's have a look at that. First of all, I'm going to select my text tool here and I'm going to type the word duplicate. Uh, set the size to 200. Let's set the alignment to center, come to properties and reset parameter. Okay, now I'm going to select that, right click, duplicate. So let's come over to properties. I'm going to set the scale to 150% and I'm going to set the opacity down to five. And let's duplicate it one more time, right click, duplicate, uh, come over to properties. Let's set this to 250 and the opacity of this one, let's set it down to one. Okay, so we've got this nice ghosted text effect. Now, you can probably work out that if we wanted to change the text, we'd have to change each individual layer, and that's a bit of a pain. So what happens if we use clone instead? So let's remove those two duplicates there, and let's select our original text layer, right click, make clone layer or K on the keyboard if you prefer. Let's do exactly the same thing. Let's set the scale to 150%. Let's set the opacity to five and let's duplicate this clone. We could clone the clone, but let's duplicate it. So right click, duplicate, set the scale to 250 and the opacity to one as we did before. Okay, so we now we've got that same arrangement. But if we now want to change the text, we can come back to our original text layer and we can type clone. Oh, if we type it correctly. And you'll see that everything follows along. And that's extremely useful. That's saved us quite a bit of effort. And if, for example, we wanted to come over here, change the font, we could do that quite easily. And again, everything follows along. Similarly, we could come over to the appearance, we could change the color and all the instances become that new color. And we could come over to the filters here, color correction. We could add a colorize filter to that. Again, you'll see that all the instances follow along. But there's an important thing you need to know, and that's that the clones do not inherit certain properties. And the properties they don't inherit are all here. They're all called properties. So if I, for example, change the X position of my original layer, the clones don't follow along. Rotation similarly, scale similarly. You get the picture. None of these actually are affected. There, there you go, that's opacity, blend mode. All of these parameters here affect the original, but they don't affect the clones. But apart from that, everything else applies. So let's come and have a look at filters. We've already looked at color correction, but let's look at distortion and let's grab flop, for example. I flop my original and the clones also flop. We could look at something else. I don't know, let's have a look at stylize edges, for example. Again, it all follows along. Okay, so another thing to point out is that it's not only layers that you can clone, it's groups as well. So let's have a look at cloning this group. So select the group, right click, make clone layer. And let's increase the scale of that to, I don't know, 300 or something. And reduce the opacity down to 15%. So now we've got a clone of the clone group. And again, we can come in our original text layer Whatever we do to this, change the word to cloning, everything, including in that cloned group, again, follows along. So I think you're starting to see the power of this method. Let's delete that clone group. And I want to come on to one of the really interesting features of this, and that is the fact that you can do things to clones that you can't actually do to anything else. So to show you that, I'm going to set up a little bit of an animation here. So I'm going to select my original clone layer, come to behaviors, basic motion, throw, to open up the velocity, let's set the 
x value to 150. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag that to the next layer up. That's making a copy of that. I'll set the x value to minus 50. Hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it to the next layer up, again making a copy. Let's set this value to plus 50. And if we press play, we see we've got this animation here. OK, so supposing I wanted to change the speed of this. Well, that's quite boring, isn't it? I'd have to go through and change each of these throw values. And imagine if I'd applied keyframes instead, I had a much more complex animation. How would I change the speed of this composite? Well, in principle, you'd think well, we can select this group, we can come to behaviors, we can come to read timing, and we can select set speed. Ah, but we can't. It won't allow us to apply a set speed to this group. But what we can do is to make a clone of this group. Right click, make clone layer. Let's turn off the original. And we can apply that same behavior to this clone layer. So behaviors, retiming, set speed. And you'll notice that now we can actually attach it. So I'm going to just set those ease in and out times to zero. And now we can look at the speed and we can adjust that. So at the moment it's half speed. So let's make it double speed. So there you go, that's double speed. Or we would make it 10%. So that's really, really handy. And again, we could come to behaviors, retiming, reverse. And we could reverse the animation. But we can do something even more interesting. We've used these behaviors to set the timing, but we can do it a different way. So let's delete those and let's come over to the timing pane here. And under time remap, let's select variable speed. And let's come to window keyframe editor. And you'll see we've got that retime value there. And what we can do is we can come here and set a keyframe, come over here, set another keyframe, and we can drag these keyframes around like this. And then if we press play, you'll see we can adjust the timing using our keyframe editor. Let me just select the marquee tool there and let's shrink that down like that. And then let's come to after last keyframe ping pong. And you'll see we've got that after last keyframe behavior there. So we're adjusting the timing of this original composite using this clone layer, and we're doing it in very sophisticated and complex ways. Obviously, this is a little bit crazy, and you probably wouldn't want to do anything exactly like that. But I've just done this to show you how incredibly powerful this clone retiming option is. So there's a lot more to be said about clones, but I hope this introductory overview has helped you understand them a little bit better. There are literally limitless possibilities once you grasp how to use them. So if you have any more questions, please do post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them and maybe do a follow-up tutorial to this. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again another time.